Live from the Oracle Conference Center in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's theCUBE, covering the Oracle Cloud Launch, brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live on the ground, pre-event coverage or pre-gaming, Larry Ellis' keynote at Oracle Cloud's platform announcements. I'm John Furrier. My co-host Dave Vellante, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. Our next guest is Prashant Ketkar, VP of Product Management the Infrastructure Group. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, great so to be the, here. The press are rolling in, exclusive announcement. Larry Ellis is going to be on stage with the flare, boom, boom, crane, jib, all, all the cameras are rolling. Yeah. Um, what's going on? What's going on with Oracle hardware, space, the infrastructure, engineered systems? Is that coming together with the cloud? What's going on? Give us a quick yeah, I mean, look, you know, we are, uh, we are investing in all three layers of the stack. As you know, we've been on the journey for several years on making sure our applications are available in the cloud as SaaS offerings. Uh, we announced uh, the platform offerings about a year ago, and we are now uh, you know, entering and continuing to expand our footprint in the infrastructure space. So we want to play in all three layers of the stack, in the software as a service area, in the platform as a service area, and in the infrastructure as a service area. So one of the big announcements is the Oracle Cloud Ar Archive Storage, kind of like leaking that out a little bit here, but it's going to be minutes before it gets announced. We heard a global CIO on earlier who says, I want my people focused in on, not on what's going on at the port level, I want them focused on the business application kind of analytics. That's right. And I want that abstracted away. Is that what you guys are doing? And sh can you share what you're doing in that area? Yeah, I mean, we are on the on the infrastructure side. We are doing a, a few very interesting things, specifically around the storage side. You know, we, we believe we are going to do uh, do disruptive things on the business model side. Uh, we've also innovated on the technology side, where we what we've done essentially is built a single policy-based storage fabric, through which a customer can tune the types of storage services that they're using in the back end without having to change anything in their application. So if you- Zero application change. Zero application change. I think that's the key. If you were to go to any one of our competitors today, if you wrote an application that called on, you know, the S3 storage service with Amazon or with their Glacier storage service and you tomorrow decided that you had to make a change to that class of service, uh, around storage, you would actually have to go tweak your application and change your application to accommodate for that backend service change. With what we are doing, we are making it completely transparent to the application developer uh, so that he can really, through policy, change the type of service that's being accessed on the backend. So my policy could be age-based. It could be age-based, uh, it, it could be, be performance-based. compliance Absolutely. issue. I, I want to put this in my deep archive. Absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, you mentioned Glacier, Amazon claims it's one of its fastest growing services yes. in history. Yes. You know, whatever it is, a penny per gigabyte per yes. month or something, if to store it. Um, how, do you, how do you compare, and can you get it back, or do I have to sort of wait six months? No, absolutely not. I think you can get it back uh, instantaneously, uh, or based on the policy that you set on how frequently you want to access it, or when you want to access it. So you definitely can get it back. Uh, and we're going to do something very interesting from a business model perspective. I think you should wait uh, to hear Larry announce that in his keynote, which he Sorry, will do so shortly. Can't tell, tell us I can't tell you detail, exactly but, but what we we're going to do. Are we talking pricing? Are we talking sort of? I gave you a little bit of an indicator into what we are doing from a technology perspective yeah. and how we're going to differentiate. I think the other key driver is what we're going to do from a business standpoint with storage. Uh, we are also doing uh, very interesting integrations between our infrastructure or hardware products on premises, storage products on premises, and uh, products on the cloud. So as an example, you know, today if you use our database as a service product, uh, you can simply back up a database into the object storage service that we have in the public cloud space. And it's a simple URL point. You don't have to uh, write code, it's a simple click, and you can back it up uh, to the Oracle. So tight integration. Cloud. Tight integration between hardware, software, and apps. So how are people going to use this? What type of customers are candidates for this? Service? Yeah, I think uh, there are a variety of industries that come to mind. Uh, any industry that requires to retain data for long periods of time, so you know your typical uh, usual suspects, the financial services industry, the insurance industry that require to retain claim records for regulatory purposes for uh, you know, I think it's 20 years here in the U United States. Uh, you know, media and entertainment companies that you know archive uh, masters of their films, 
uh, are you know interesting candidates. But you could see that there are a variety of verticals and variety of industries that could use uh, the service in many many different ways. Prashant, one of the things that people con are concerned about with the cloud. Forget security for a second. Maybe yes. we can talk about that. But there's data location. Yes. I ha I'm in Germany. I have my data has to stay in Germany. Uh, are you hearing that? I mean, of course you're hearing that. But how are you? Uh, solving that, does this solution help? Address yeah, I that think problem? it's a it's a it's a journey, and it's a two-step journey. I think there are classes of applications that have very stringent requirements around uh, data uh, sovereignty and where data resides, and then there are other classes of applications for whom the data could be anywhere, uh, or in fact, they would want the data to be, uh, you know, stored in a backup site someplace else, where it's at least 500, 600 miles away from their primary data center. So we yeah. see very, very interesting scenarios in which customers are using not just the storage cloud, but the cloud in general, right, and the storage service. Uh, they are using it to DR their primary data center to the cloud. Uh, so they DR to the cloud is one scenario. DR off the cloud is another scenario. I'm already running something in the cloud, and I want to put it on some other cloud. You know, it could be Amazon, it could be Microsoft's, what have you. So I got to ask you, if, so, if a customer says, hey, just bottom line me, are you DevOps compatible? Yeah, you know, look. You then know, what does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a that's a very interesting question. I think it's the just say yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, but I mean, know, so it, that's it, what it they want. They want to have the, they want some future proof. They want to know that yes. I'm going to build an agile application environment. That's right. I need storage that's going to respond in software. Yes. So what we are doing is uh, we are making sure that when we think about the design point for what we are building for public cloud, we are also factoring that back into what we are doing with our on-premises software, be it the database product be it our infrastructure products with hardware, uh, be it our operating systems. And what we want to make sure is that customers have compatibility between architecture that is on the cloud, at public cloud, and architecture that they're building in their own data center when they're using our products. So that when they build an application, whether they're building it on the public cloud, or they're building it in their own private data center or private cloud uh, environment, they can move back with as little or no code change as possible. I think that's the core of what we are trying to do with uh, investing in all three layers of the stack and making sure that the architecture stays consistent uh, between on-prem and on the cloud. So everyone's rolling in now, we're getting ready to break you, but I want to ask you a final question. What's the vibe inside Oracle right now? A lot of mojo back from old school Oracle engineers coming, en engineer leads coming, new blood coming in, engineered systems was a good bet, clouds yes. here, application markets exploding and transforming. You guys seem to be positioned well. What's the, what's the vibe internally? I think, look, it's a, it's a very interesting space to be in, particularly in the enterprise side. The journey is just beginning. I think the enterprise infrastructure in the cloud or the enterprise platform in the cloud is not built yet. There's a lot of opportunity and we are very, very excited to participate in the journey with our customers. Well, thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE today. We appreciate it. We're getting ready for the big announcement. The press are rolling in. You can see behind us, Dave, we've got a lot of action happening. We're going to take a break. We're going to do some um, segments in between Larry Ellison and the execs. We're going to break away from that and do our kind of halftime commentary. This is theCUBE. Stay tuned for more live coverage. Larry Ellison will be out, about to kind of get on stage. He's in the building from what I hear. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>